Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tolu. I'm your friendly Christian relationship counselor. And today I wanted to talk about this whole theory of there just being one person. Is there really just the one? The just just one person, okay? So we're going to break this down right here, right now. So let's get started. The first thing I will say is this is a complete misconception thinking that there's just one person for you because if you think about it, there are a number of people that have married different men maybe because they have a late wife or a late husband or it's a situation where the first marriage did not work out for whatever reason, maybe he was physically abusive and they went on to be happily married to someone else. And what I want you to understand from this is you're not the same person you were two months or even two minutes ago in some cases, depending on your particular experience at that point in time. So there isn't just the one person for you. And I really wanted to address this because I know it's a huge misconception that is made, especially when you are starting to build your relationship with God. I used to make this very mistake myself of thinking there's just one perfect person without understanding the fact that even as you grow in God, you were not the same person you were two years ago when you knew him as you are today. So what you really want to focus on instead is looking at the person that suits the purpose God has given you. Because that purpose is going to remain constant. That purpose is going to remain true. That purpose is going to remain clear and transparent. And that is what you want to use to analyze whether or not the person that you are looking at is the right one for you. And purpose applies in three different capacities that I really want to break down here. But I do this some more with you in the Dating to Marry sessions where I work with you on knowing how to recognize the right man and how to know um, the wrong one for you. But what I will say here is we're going to address three different areas that you can look at. The first being the spirit. Now, your spirit is constant. You know, you are a new creature. Your spirit is is, is a source. It's a, it's the source of, of life. If your spirit leaves your body, you are no longer alive. The word says faith without deeds is dead, just like the spirit without the body is dead. So without the spirit, the body is actually dead. So you want to look at that man's spirit. That's the first thing you want to look at. Do you share similar values? Is he a Christian? Are you both called to the same and similar purpose in life? Does he have a similar um, relationship with God like you have? Is he, is he constant in his faith? Is he true? You see, is he someone that can wash you with the water of the word as scripture describes it? You see someone that that God has given you peace about, peace that passes all understanding. That means that even if you're fighting, even if it makes no sense, this peace of God is there. The Holy Spirit is always bringing you both to reconcile with each other. You see someone that God has given you a revelation of yourself through in a good way. And the reason this is so important to look at first is it eliminates a lot of mistakes that you could save yourself from. Mistakes in this instance being you try and think you can change that man, you try and influence his religion, you try and make sure that he waits for marriage to have sex when someone has told you clearly through their action or their words or both in some cases that he is not about that lifestyle. So it's very important that you look first at the spirit that will tell you very quickly, very efficiently, very effectively if that is the man God has for you. And God gives, God downloads a lot of information into your spirit. The word says, call unto me and I will show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. And this comes through your spirit. So you first need to look at the spirit. The next area that we're going to deal with is your soul. The soul is the mind, the will, and emotions. This is where soul ties are formed, be it good or bad. This is where, um, and the reason I mention soul ties is it's a whole debate we had in the Wife and Wedding Sisterhood, which is an amazing community where, like I've shared with you all, I mentor women on preparing them for a godly marriage. And I watch what is iron sharpens iron. So the sisters share areas that are not clear on all the time. One of the areas was soul ties. And soul ties can be good or bad, but the area I want to deal with here is your mind your will and emotions are going to change they are going to evolve as you get older they are going to be you know they are, they, are, they are going to be a reflection of who you are becoming you will notice that your patience grows more or it grows less depending on where, what stage you're at in your walk depending on your relationship with God and the work you have put in making sure that you become a better person and the example I like to give here is fruits of the spirit you know there's love joy kindness peace and so on and so forth 
you will notice that the closer you get to God, the more the fruit of the Spirit starts to manifest in your life. The more it becomes clear to you, the right man for you and the wrong one for you. The more it becomes clear to you, areas you need to work on to become the right person for the right one. The more it becomes clear to you, areas that are non-negotiables that you desire in a partner and areas that you are flexible on, depending on how God has given you that revelation. And this is also a very good guide of knowing whether this is the right man for you or not. The final area that I want us to tackle is the body. And what I will say about this is you want to be with someone you are physically attracted to for sure. But the first thing I want you to look at is the spirit and then you look at the soul before you get to the body. And the body in this instance is what are you physically attracted to? What are you willing to work on? What are you willing to improve on in yourself? What are you willing to, um, to compromise on? What are you attracted to in a man? And that in itself is going to change as a result of your growth in the spirit and as a result of your growth in your soul. It is going to change. And the reason the body is last is because it really is a combination of that checklist that you may have in your head and all women have a list of qualities that you desire in a spouse and when you get to the body you want to make sure that that man actually reflects physical attributes and qualities you find attractive maybe you desire a man that is fit you desire a man that um that that is tall you desire a man that is fair or dark however your preference is suited you want to make sure that the body is in alignment with it. That is your desires. And you are also mirroring those desires yourself because best believe that man also has desires that he has in the flesh. So what you want to do in this area is really look for where God has given you clarity and where he has stood firm with you on. That is, he has told you clearly that your husband is going to have these physical qualities so that you can work on it, you can get better at it, and you can definitely make sure that it's a man that you find attractive across all these three areas. And the soul, the mind, will, and emotions covers intellectual capacity, it covers his ability to reason, it covers his ability to be able to hold a conversation with you, and so on and so forth. You want to make sure that there's clarity in that area and your spirit and the body as well. And this is exactly why it's so important that you start to look at these three qualities as a metric to determine if he is the one for you. Because it's really not based on any particular one man. It's based on your growth, really. And it's based on who God has called you to become. And it's based on your purpose. And this is exactly how you will know. Now, if you want to get deeper into this, the Dating to Marry sessions are open again next year, 2021. Depending on when you're watching this, just click the link in the description box to get on the waiting list. I only work with a few clients at a time um, and I really want to make sure that you get clarity on what exactly you should look for when you are looking at the one and when you're thinking about the one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and you can check out these other videos as well. Until next time.